Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Did you know you can support the channel by joining? Something to think about. Now onto the stories. Case file number 945, written by Unlimited Power 2331. Glitch of Free Energy. My wife and I came home from work yesterday. We both work in the same office building, but we have the same schedule, which is neat. She was getting ready to whip up dinner, but as she went to preheat the oven, it wouldn't turn on. We thought maybe the breaker had popped or the oven somehow was unplugged. We pulled it out from the counter to check the plug first. As we were pulling it out, we noticed that the plug was tiny. We bought this ourselves and installed it when we moved in here nearly three years ago. Somehow, the oven had a 120 volt male plug instead of the usual 240 volt that all ovens I've ever seen have. There is no way the plug had always been this dinky little 120 back when we installed it. And the oven has always cooked perfectly. It didn't take forever to preheat the oven. It cooked at proper temperatures. Not induction, but still heats up water in a few minutes to boil. Sears a perfect steak, etc. And trust me, if it couldn't sear a steak, we'd have returned it on my shoulders. This is fully electric too, not gas. To my knowledge, there's no way an electric oven could run properly on 120 volts. There's just not enough energy, flat out. Maybe the oven and range would turn on, but they'd be weak as hell. We googled the model of the oven and confirmed that it was supposed to be a 240 volt connection. How have we been cooking perfect stir fry steaks, lasagnas, pizzas, etc. all these years on 120? And why did our oven even have a 120 volt cord? We tried contacting the company, LG, but every agent we spoke to thought we were either crazy or trying to scam them. Case notes are file 945, a glitch of free energy. As far as we know, there's no way to create matter or energy in the universe. We can only interchange them either between their own forms, different forms of energy or matter, or between energy and mass itself. So if your oven was indeed just drawing from 120 volts, but still cooking perfectly normally at normal speeds, that means there's energy that was siphoned from somewhere else. Uh, like you said, you looked up the oven model and it's not some hyper advanced, super efficient 120 volt oven. There was energy drawn from somewhere. Back in the day, Nikola Tesla actually was inventing or trying to perfect a means to transmit energy, electricity, effectively electrical current through the atmosphere. The problem with that is it's extremely inefficient because it follows the inverse square law, which you find as well for light. So basically that means for every unit of distance that's doubled, you, uh, you don't get twice as much energy needed, you get four times as much. And it keeps on going and going and going as you expand to a larger and larger, basically a bubble around whatever the source is. So the closer you are, the more efficient and the further away you go by dramatic amounts it decreases. However, in theory it's still possible, so something was feeding the oven energy, likely through the atmosphere. I don't think it could be the cord because a 120 volt power cord is rated for 120 volts. If you increase the voltage with the same amount of amps, you get more energy and the, the cord itself would start to melt. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to cook much then. But the whole thing is just crazy. Why was the oven wired for 120 volts? And as you say, it wasn't when you installed it and bought it. So what the hell happened there? Did somehow the oven wire DOP from another universe and then reconnect in your universe as 120 volt? I guess a wire is just fused into the, the oven. It's a very well simmered glitch. <laughs> Case file number 946, written by Winter and Summer. The glitch that was hurled twice. I came home one evening and my cat greeted me at the door, as is typical. I went to the kitchen to make myself something to eat, a quick snack before the main course dinner that was on the way, Chinese. I sat down at the kitchen counter bar area. My cat hopped up and barfed in front of me. Ugh. Sorry to be descriptive, but it was a small pile of vomit, mostly green, impossible to miss or confuse for anything else. I cleaned up the vomit and my cat scurried off upstairs before I could examine her. She rarely pukes. Furball sometimes, but even that is rare. She's Burmese, short hair. I had already finished making the sandwich, but let's just say my appetite for snacking was a little diffused, thanks to little Luna's biological expulsion. What's weird about this? Nothing really, until I see Luna downstairs even though I saw her scurry upstairs 
and then see or hear her come back down, hop back up on the kitchen bar area, and puke again. The puddle looked identical to the last one that I already had cleaned up. And yes, the paper towels I used to clean up the first mess were still in the garbage can. This is a very gross glitch, but that's all I can attribute it towards. Luna virtually never pukes. To do it twice in the same way, the same area, in the same quantity, it's not normal. I had fed her the same thing I always do. She eats exclusively wet, luxurious food. The past two months, I've had her on Purina Pro Plan, adult tuna. She devours it. Case notes for file 946, the glitch that was hurled twice. Let's not discount entirely the possibility that Luna, your cat, simply was sick. It does happen randomly. Sometimes maybe the Purina batch of food that you bought the can, maybe just that one can, hadn't been sterilized properly. Still very odd that the cat repeated exactly the same motion. Same act, same amount of puke, <laughs> same amount of barf. Definitely a gross kind of glitch, but hey, it's still a story worth telling, I think. I do think there is a possibility this is an actual glitch because of the way everything repeats. If she had just barfed again upstairs, you know, in a slightly different amount, it's probably just a case of bad food in that in that sense. Not every can is going to be the same. I've had uh, nasty experiences with canned beans. <laughs> Most cans are perfectly fine, but every now and again you get one can that just tears you up. And it's not pleasant. But it really is kind of amazing because you have evidence that you cleaned up the first mess. So it's not just universal peering. It's almost like a Luna from a different universe poured it over here completely in physical matter, not just soul, and puked and then reverted back to their real universe. Maybe that can happen. It's plenty of accounts now of people coming over, switching universes within this great multiverse, not just in soul, but in physical matter, their whole body, pets too, mass, any kind of mass. It's incredible. Bonus file. Written by Do Something 21. The Mystery of the Nordic Pretzel Man. I was walking home at night through a path carved in the forest. I live in Finland, and to say there's forests everywhere is underselling it. A long walk over five kilometers, about three miles for my American friends. One note here. The forested path is lit up with little lampposts throughout the trail. It's kind of gorgeous at night. This does make it hard to see outside of the bubbles of light cast by the lampposts. As I turned for the final leg through the trail, maybe two kilometers left, I saw something that froze the core of my soul, and it's still icy even now, days later. There was the figure of a man suspended in a tree on a large branch. Initially, I thought I was hallucinating, almost looked like a bat. He was extremely thin, motionless, in a contorted, pretzelized version of himself. Arms, legs, pulled together, twisted. I can only think of every single bone in his limbs as broken. Actually, the first thing that crossed my mind was a bit more comical. The spell Gildery Lockhart used to remove Harry's bones after the Quidditch match. Brachium Mimendo. This funny thought was robbed of me very quickly. The man was dressed in dark clothes, but as cold as it was, I couldn't make out any features. He had a hood draped far over his face, with a full winter face mask beneath it. You know, people like to think about what they do when faced with extreme situations. I know I always wondered. If someone robbed a bank, I'd be the hero. I don't know about that anymore. This was an extreme situation, and to be fair, what the hell was I supposed to do when I see a man almost compressed into a pretzel ball dangling from a tree branch? There was no heroic action or thought to my running away moments later. I'm hardly a sprinter, but that night I ran so fast I couldn't feel my legs. I'm never going to walk that path again unless I have friends with me. And no, there was no report of this anywhere in the news, not that I've seen so far. Was this a haunting, or was this some creepy serial killer? Case notes for the bonus file. The Nordic Pretzel Man. I mean, I fully believe in the terror that it was instilled in you. You don't just go around touching random pretzel-fied corpses dangling from trees. That's insane. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Maybe it was a spirit that had been killed in a very uh, terrible, terrifying way in the past, and it was just an apparition of that. It, he wasn't really there. Or maybe indeed it is some, some twisted serial killer. You know, you might not hear it in the news because police, if they're investigating that, they wouldn't want to release all the details. If no one else saw it, which is possible, given it's a cold forest path, I don't know how often people walk that. 
It's something I would do, though. That sounds uh, peaceful and heavenly. Besides the the corpse or ghost in the tree. I have to say, too, uh, the way you describe it is kind of neat, even though very morbid. I don't even like pretzels, but just using that word to describe someone, it's um powerful. Let's go with that. All right, another three stories, all completed. It's really cool. I just love doing this. You know, I'm so lucky. I don't think I've said that enough, but I am blessed that everyone loves watching me and listening to the stories I narrate. It's so cool. And if you love it too, just like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. It's like a auto-tune song now at this point. I just have to keep reverberating those exact patterns and uh, eventually we'll get there.